Hello everyone, welcome to 3dDesignAcademy.com. In this lesson, we will learn about how to create a ball corner. Okay, so in the previous lessons, uh, we've uh, explored two different ways to create a ball corner using the, let's see, the ball corner tool and the corner blend tool. In this one, I'm going to show you guys how to build it manually. Now, it would be ideal if you could just use the tools, the ball corner tool and the corner blend tool in order to create a ball corner because they are very easy and quick to do. But you might, when you're modeling, you might come across some odd shapes and odd fillet sizes that might require a manual build because the regular tools just wouldn't work. So in this lesson, I'm going to show you guys how. Okay, since we've gone over the theory, um, I think we can just get rid of these like that and I'm going to go straight to this one and I'm going to set up the same perimeters that as we did before so I'm just going to go to surface fillet so I'm just going to say chord it's going to be g2 uh, quarter length of 50 form factor of 1 and for the flow control I'm going to set to edge align on both the start and end and for the trim type I'm going to set to uh, curves and surface so I'm just going to build a fillet over here here and for this one i'm going to do a little bit different so let me just delete the construction history first and i'm going to trim over here i'm going to trim over here and trim over here now the uh for the third fillet i'm just going to do it this way because i do need this edge so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to set the quarter length to 75 because this was a little bit bigger so i'm just going to say build like this and I'm actually going to set the trim type to automatic so that it trims automatically. So what we are trying to achieve is a clean fourth edge, just a natural boundary. So that's why I'm trying to use this one. And let's go ahead and delete the construction history. And I'm going to set the surface up for the ball corner over here. Okay, so like all the other ball corners, we do need a fourth edge. So what I'm going to do is, well, you can, there are different ways to do this. You can do a blend curve or you can just create a curve like this. Set it to degree five and you can align it. Or what I like to do is I like to use the curve fillet tool. So I'm just going to grab the curve fillet tool. I'm going to say chord. I'm going to say G2 because it does need to be curvature and let's start with quarter length of 10. So I'm just going to pick these two edges and I'm going to say build like that. Okay, so I think it could be a little bit bigger. So I'm going to maybe set at 30. I think that's a pretty decent size. So let's go ahead. Actually, you know what? Let me just make it a little bit bigger. Maybe I'll just do 40 like this. Okay, so I think that looks pretty good. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to create, uh, connect the curve from here to here because I'm going to cut this one, fill it uh, with a, a rail or a surface. So I'm just going to do that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to do a rail. I'm going to pick this one as a gen and I'm going to pick this one as a rail. Okay, so it looks like it's got a lot of spans. Um, so what I'm gonna do is instead of picking this edge, I'm going to pick the fillet edge like this, or you can just do a rebuild, doesn't really matter. And what I'm going to, uh, I'm just going to do the same thing for here, like this. Oh, I'm going to pick the fillet edge like this. Okay, so the purpose of this, uh, creating a rail like this, is to cut this with a planar curve, or not a planar curve, a planar surface. So uh, that allows you to trim the surface very cleanly. So I'm going to just do this one over here, and I'm going to extend this one as well. And because right now it's, uh, it's basically the edges are touching, I'm just going to extend this just a little bit more, like that so that it, when I intersect, it's not going to do some weird stuff. Okay, so I'm just gonna grab this uh, grab this surface. I'm gonna say go intersect over here and I'm going to do the same thing over here like this. And these surfaces are no longer necessary, so I'm just gonna delete. And these curves are no longer necessary either. So I'm just gonna delete those as well. And now what I'm going to do is Right now, if I were to just build it off the, this um, carbon surface over here, it's going to have a lot of data. So 
Um, actually, let me show you guys. So I'm just going to build it up with a square over here. One, two, three, and four. And I'm going to set everything to curvature. Now it does build it, but as you can see over here, it's got a lot of spans. Actually, let me see if I can do. Okay, so it's a failing of you. Okay, and if you see the structure over here, it's a very, very messy. So I'm just going to delete that. And what I'm going to do now is in order to make this into a natural edge, natural surface edge, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead. Let's see, under trim, there's something called a trim convert. So I'm just going to use this. So what this does is it basically rebuilds a surface with the current surface in mind. So let me show you guys. So I'm just going to say, I'm going to say convert. Now, as you can see, basically it's using the current surface edge as a new fourth edge for this uh, for the surface. So basically think of it as a square using the square tool and instead of using the natural edge or a curve boundary, it's using a current surface in order to rebuild it. So I'm just going to do that like this. Now these surfaces, I'm just going to delete or you can just hide it if you need it. And I'm going to just, just put it like that. Okay, so I think the proportions are uh, good. And now let's see if we can fill the square. Oh, actually, before you do that, you got to make sure that all the surfaces are curvature. So just in case, I'm just going to align. And I'm going to make sure that it is edge over here. And I'm going to make sure that this is curvature over here. Because the trim convert tool is not it's not going to give you 100% um, same surface all the time because it is based on the current surface. Sometimes the shift is, uh, CVs shift a little bit and they can sometimes break the uh, continuity. So you just want to make sure uh, that all the surfaces are curvature. So in this case, it's going all the way through here. So I'm going to just click on partial to make sure that it stays here. And I'm going to make sure that it's edge over here. This one I'm not going to touch. I'm just going to say edge over here. Okay, and everything's good. So I'm just going to delete the construction history over here. Okay, so that looks pretty good. And I'm going to go ahead and use the square tool. Okay, so I'm going to set everything to free for now, explicit control off so that I can show you guys step by step. Okay, so as you can see, even with this one, the CV structure is so much better. To be honest, I don't know why, but it is much better. And I'm going to now set everything to curvature and I'm going to say, oh, okay. So it looks like it is, um, it was the explicit control and the continuity that, uh, I guess ruined it. Okay. So now since the surfaces are natural edge, you can almost guarantee, well, you can guarantee that this only, if this pole corner edge over here only requires a five degree one span same thing over here and same thing over here but what do we do about the cv structure that's flying everywhere now that's where the square control the continue option if you go over here this is where the collinear uh, collinear options come in now this is a very advanced uh, feature within square it is also available in rail what it does, it, it aligns the CV structure to the surface that it is trying to align to. So let me show you guys how it's done. So in side one, you will see that before we did the square, or before we did the continuity, you'll see the CVs are sort of lining up. In this one, it's lining up very well because this surface over here is lining up well. So. What collinear options does it, it aligns the CV structure. So let me just turn the curvature back on all of them. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on boundary one like this. Now it's curvature and you'll see that the CV structure is aligned up perfectly. And I'm going to do the same thing over here on side three. Now that's much better. And I'm going to do the same thing on boundary four. And here it is. Voila and we got curvature on all sides now this side is not aligned so you got to make sure that it is now in if you did everything right you should be either 
uh, curvature or it should be pretty close. So let me see if I can check to make sure that it is. So I'm just going to go over here, project, and I'm going to just project this uh, edge over here like this. Um, you can, well, depends. Uh, you can either view Z or normal, doesn't really matter. Uh, let's see if I can do a measurement, surface continue tool. Now for this one, what I like to do is I always like to show, uh, turn the show max labels and show command so that if the continue is off, I know exactly where it's off. So I'm just going to click here and we were actually able to achieve curvature. I think this was because it's a relatively simple, very traditional ball corner. Um, there are probably instances where it might be a little bit difficult to achieve uh, such a uh, such a easy uh, as a continuity over here, but we were able to achieve on this one. However, I do not like the CV structure that much right now. There's a little bit of zigzag over here, so I'm going to see if I can control this a little bit better. Now, this is where I like to use the boundary blend. And now you might be wondering why it's there. Well, this is one of the prime examples of where you can use it. And this is one of the reasons why I prefer to use a square instead of a uh, by rail, because it's got the control over here. So let's see if I can just shift the series. Now, this one doesn't really do much. Now, it does organize this one, but looks like it's actually destroying this one. So I'm gonna see if I, this one works. Oh, that's, I think that's much better. Now it looks like there's a little bit of CV structure funny going on over here. So I'm gonna see if I can do this. And these ones, let's see if I can manually adjust it. So I'm just going to, well, actually, I'm going to delete the construction history over here. And I'm going to, just in case, turn the uh, construction options on or surface continue on. And I'm going to see, okay, so transform CV. I'm going to do a proportional modification and I'm going to use the slide option. And for this one, I'm going to set the mouse sensitivity to 50. Actually, you know what? I don't think I'm going to use it because I think these need to move about the same. So I'm just going to do a regular move. I'm going to set it to slide. I'm going to grab these two CVs back to transform. A slide over here and when you are doing this you want uh, you want to make sure that you are grabbing this one which is closer to this side instead of this one because if i grab this one it's going to go this way which is not what you want so in order to retain the continue as much as possible you want to use this arrow over here i'm going to slide it like this okay and i might want to slide this one just a little bit more and you'll notice that it is staying within the tolerance and we were a, still able to retain curvature okay so i'm just going to do the same thing over here i'm going to grab this one and i'm going to use the shift i'm going to press on shift hold on shift and i'm going to click and grab both cvs i'm going to shift this one over here okay that looks pretty good and we were still able to achieve curvature oh, okay so i might want to do a little bit more so i because i see a little bit of issue over here that looks good that looks pretty straight that one i actually might want to kick it back out and this one just gonna place it over here and that looks perfect and we were able to, now that did take a very long time relative to the corner blend tool and the ball corner tool, but we were able to achieve curvature on all sides. And well, the fact is uh, the manual way is going to work probably 90% of the time, whereas ball corner tool and the corner blend tool, um, uh, there might be cases where it might not work. So it is always, uh, a good to know how this ball corner works and uh, uh, how to use it so that in case and you need to manually uh, manually build it then you know how okay so for the final touch i'm going to just de delete the curve over here and i'm going to just trim and there we go actually if you want to do a super clean job you can always redo the curving surface here because the curving surfaces are merging over here so what you want to do is just delete the current surface here and I'm going to reproject like this. And we now have a very clean ball corner. Everything's a single span. 
highlights excellent it flows very nicely and I'm pretty happy with the result okay so that is the third and the manual way to create a ball corner thank you guys for watching and see you next time